Hey guys, in this time I'm gonna explain you a little bit about Kali. It's uh, nothing fancy, nothing new. It's just our effort so that you guys know, in case that you never know before, this specific Linux distribution, since we are gonna be using it heavily during our labs. So first of all, what is Kali Linux? Well, it is a penetration testing Linux distribution. It is created by Offensive Security Team. It is a really awesome distribution. Uh, mainly, it has a repository of multiple tools so that uh, security-related engineers can use them in their engagements. You can find tools for hacking web wireless, hacking web applications, for reverse engineers, for database hackers, uh, for security auditors, for forensic guys, uh, for password crackers. I mean, it is an arsenal uh, of tools that we will take a look later. Uh, but it is pretty cool. Uh, it is very recommended because that way you can find tools that you probably didn't know before or tools that sometimes are hard to configure. Let's talk about, let's say, a wireless specific driver from a specific um network card that it is difficult to install well those guys have put a lot of effort in order to configure those drivers in order for you to have ready that specific testing and that's just one example that's that's the effort behind offensive security they put a lot of effort configuring this specific list linux distrib distribution so that uh everyone who is, is is able to use it they can get those benefits they don't need to take too much time trying to install other stuffs. You can go to Kali Linux downloads from Offensive Security, you can see that they provide already virtual machine options uh, in 32 bits and, 30, and 64 bits. So you can just download it. Uh, it is really big, so I'm not, I'm not gonna do it that right now. And But also it's pretty cool because they also have images for other architecture. In this case, ARM images, which is kind of smaller architectures for phones, like Android, Android phones. So you can see here that they have Raspberry <coughs> and many, many other uh, architectures related to ARM, Samsung Chromebook, and all of those. So once you download it, you just place it into your uh, local directory, and you will need either virtual uh, VMware uh, licensed to run it or VMware player, which is free. So you can just easily go to <coughs> Uh, VMware, you just you, you know you just search for VMware Player Download, and then you can just pick the first one. And basically, I mean, this is something that you guys already know, but you just VM, click on VM, VMware Player, and eventually you will have those links. You just need to download VMware Player and be ready to start using this specific um, image. Once you have it, the next thing you need to do is you need to run uh, VMware. In my case, I have VMware, so I'm going to explain you that process. Um, you just go to File, Open, and then you search for your specific Kali version. I have it here already. You go to your folder where you download the image. By the way, the image comes with 7-zip. Seven 7-zip seven is like a zip uh, compressor. You just need to download a software which is able to open 7-zip, like WinRAR, I think that's able to handle it. And <clears throat> you just decompress it into your folder, in my case, right here. And when you open it with VMware, it will be able to recognize your VMware virtual machine configuration file which is this in blue, you just double click on it. And finally here, you have all the configuration already set up by this specific image. You can see that it has a certain memory amount, processor, hard disk, and 
Linux port adapter, all those things. And at the bottom, you can see it says Kali Linux 1, login as root, and password Tor. By the way, this Kali Linux change, uh, usually these guys are updating the images and changing the, uh, the version, adding more drivers, adding more, the more tools. I want to just quickly talk about the network adapter. This is very important for you as a penetration tester or security reviewer. Um, here you have mainly three options. Host only, that means that your network is going to be just local. You can talk between VMs and even with the host. And I'm going to do a, a, a stop here. Um, we have in these virtual environment uh, scenarios, we have a host and a guest. When we talk about the host, that's the operating system running the machine, the hardware behind. And we, when we talk about the guest, that's the operating system running on top of the host machine. In our case, Kali, since it is running inside the virtual machine, that's our guest OS. And our host OS is my Windows system. So here in the host only, that means that Kali the guest image can communicate with other virtual machines and also with the host operating system, in this case, Windows, but cannot be reached uh, by the network or internet. NAT is a network translation address, network address translation uh, protocol. So this basically is putting your, your box behind uh, a gateway so that basically it can reach internet but cannot be reached directly. And so basically in this case, it is gonna be connecting through the host network. In this case, through our operating Linux, sorry, Windows operating system. It's gonna be using our Windows host as the gateway to reach internet. And finally, the bridged. Bridged is like you have your virtual machine in the same network. It's like if someone is in the same network and try to connect you to your machine, they will be able to reach it and they don't, don't even notice it is a VM, virtual machine behind. So this is pretty, pretty cool when dealing with a penetration testing effort where you need the victims or the machines being tested to connect back to you. That's what, the way you need to go. Bridge can help you to, for example, something, something called reverse shells that they need a real IP to connect back and give access to the penetration tested to the to the machine being uh, test a bridge is gonna be the way to go because for example if you use use NAT when the when the victim machine is trying to connect back to you they won't be able to reach you because you are behind a gateway keep in mind that so you will need kind of other setup of configuration which is difficult so just keep in mind bridge is like if you are in the network with your own IP NAT is you are behind a gateway and host you have not connection uh, to other uh, uh, computers in the network. With that being said, I mean, we have many other options, but that's the most important one. We're going to be using here NAT and I would recommend host only if you are doing malware analysis, any malicious sample, that way you don't affect other networks. Um, but let's start using NAT so that we can have internet access and not exposed and not be reached directly by other hosts. We click here in power on this virtual machine. As usual, you will get being we're running and um, it's a little bit slow. And well, basically here you will have two options. 
Recovery mode is basically when something is going wrong, uh, the hard disk was damaged and you need to fix it, you will go here, you will enter your, your root password and you know, as a, this is more like for Linux system administrators, if you know how to play with uh, hard disk, how to fix issues in your OS, uh, you need to get there if there is any problem. And this is the default one, so we're just gonna uh, enter right there. Once you enter, uh, the Kali is gonna start booting. By the way, Kali is based on Debian, or Debian, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, what that means is that the way that you install software in Debian, the way you configure Debian to access internet, to the way you configure Debian uh, to manage the different services is going to be the same way you're going to be doing it here in Kali. And we're, I'm, we're, I'm going to show you all those different options in a different uh, lab. So this is um, the way it is booting and we are going to get our prompt in a second. And once we get the prompt, we will need to enter our uh, username. I created a couple of usernames already, but let's enter with root so that that's the one that you guys are going to get at the beginning. So I enter, you get access. You have the prompt of the logo, really cool logo of Kali Linux. When you want to switch between being where and the host, if you click right here in the screen, uh, you will have access, you see, to the host. And if you want to release the mouse in order to get access to your host operating system, you just click Control Alt and you get out of this host so you can reach other menus outside, as you can see. Again, you want to get back, you just click right into the screen and you are inside again. And here you can click Control Alt Enter to get full screen. If you don't get the full screen, you need to install VMware Tools, which is another option in the menu. It is called right here. In my right, install VMware Tools. In your case, it's gonna say install VMware Tools. That's basically helping you to uh, be able to uh, get full screen, also be able to transfer files to your virtual machine or to do copy paste text into the clipboard easily. So that's pretty useful uh, because let's say that you have here, uh, by the way, I just entered the terminal. Um, let's say that you are here and let, let's get out of this. I'm just gonna open notepad quickly. And let's say that you need to paste a really big chunk of code, whatever it is, right? And, and you wanna copy any, any specific test outside your virtual machine, you just right click, copy. And when you get into your machine and you just click, right click and paste, you can see that you can get that. That's pretty useful because sometimes you need to share information with other other friends in that they don't have access to the virtual machine. Sometimes you find something in the host in a specific page that you wanna share inside. So if you, sometimes if you don't have VMware tools enabled, that's gonna be a problem. And as you can see, this is pretty, pretty helpful. And here I just opened the, uh, the terminal. As you can see, you can find it right in the top. Also, you can find here in the applications all the access to the different options. Here in Kali Linux, you have all the arsenal of tools, as you can see right there. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And the first thing you need to do when you get access to the to the Kali is you need to change the password. As you remember, the password is stored, so you don't want anyone to reach your, uh, your Kali Linux system and get access to your host. So you just do passwd, enter, and then you will just enter your new password. Uh, anything that you want to put there. Obviously it's recommended a uh, strong password, which you know, can be like 16 characters long, 
and alphanumeric with special charts and it's going to say password updated successful and that's very important because you is your root password right and finally uh as you notice i changed uh well i'm going to talk about it in the next in the next lab so you are inside this is your kali and you're ready to go Hey guys, so we are here in the second part of this Kali Labs. As I said, it's just basic stuff to get you guys ready to use it. And right now I'm going to explain you just the next steps right after you start running Kali. So the first thing that you might want to do is configure your system. In my case, I just changed the desktop background. You just right click here. Uh, this kind of things is not related to Kali, but still I'm gonna just mention it quickly. You click here in the in the plus sign. Here you can go to your file system and find your any um, picture you want. Select it, and then you will get the background changed. Also, you can see that I have uh, here the terminal right here. You can access it in the terminal. As you notice, I changed the host. You see, it's the CSTT. You can also print the host name as like this. And you want to change it, you just go to etc host name and you just put the name right there, reboot the machine, and you will get it. Connectivity is very important. The first thing you need to know is if you have access to internet. So you need to do if config. That's gonna print out um, the content of your uh, configuration. And normally here, Kali is very good recognizing multiple drivers. So usually you won't have any problems unless you have a weird configuration with weird credit cards. Probably uh, Kali is not gonna be able to to identify it but here in so far we can see the IP address that we got, got assigned to us that IP address is very important to notice that is coming from a DHCP server if you have if you are working from home and you have your Wi-Fi uh, provider it already have DHCP enabled so you just need to request IP and you will get it Uh, how do you request IP? So let's say that I'm going to take down that specific R interface. So we don't have anything right now. So I'm gonna, just going to use the DHCP, DH client, which is the HTTP. You can see in the right side, we got disconnected. So we just do DH client, the interface. And um, if we do if config, you can see that we got the IP okay so that's that's very important by doing this you don't need to configure anything else the next step that you need to do is just you, 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 you need to pin something outside uh, to see if you're getting connection you can see that you're getting 65 bytes response so we are fine Another important point here is that sometimes I highly recommend you to also ping IPs because sometimes you will have internet access but not DNS resolution. So if you, for example, do a ping uh, with an IP address, you can see that you get a response. But let's say 
that I'm going to access the DNS configuration, which is right here. And I'm just going to comment out the name server like this. If I ping Yahoo, you can see it says unknown host. But if I ping the IP, you can see that I'm still getting response. That's a pretty pretty a uh, common mistake that when we are trying to ping domain names and we see that we don't have we don't have response we think that we don't have connection we don't have any any internet access and that's not true as you can see we have communication but we don't have um, dns resolution so as i as you saw i just need to go to resolve and in this case i enable the default one which actually was added by the dhcp server when i executed the dh client but a quick trick also here is that sometimes our name service uh, doesn't work so you can use google once if you don't mind going through google traffic it's up to you which is 8888 you just save it and you can see that if we do a, a ping we get again access okay i'm just gonna revert it back to the one that i had and that's it so we have configuration if for some reason you when you do if config you don't get any interface that's a troubleshooting is out of scope but I recommend you to go to Kali forums. They have multiple support there. It's not out of scope to fix those issues. Um, we are assuming everything's up and running. What is next? Uh, the next thing is that you need to know what is running in your uh, in your in your Kali Linux. Some of the time there are multiple services running. If you do lsof e tcp, you can see what it is running right now. We can see that we have Apache and MySQL. Okay, MySQL is the database. Apache is the web server, and this is very important. This because probably you are running services that you don't know. And probably you don't need them to be running. Like Apache, if you don't have a web server in Kali, you don't need to run it. The way you manage those services is by using the service command, which I'm going to show you in a second. The second option is you can go to Kali Linux system services, and here you have the services that are running or can be run. And you just click on them to restart, start, stop. The same for all of them. HTTP for the web server, Metasploit for the uh, framework, exploit exploitation framework, MySQL for the database, OpenBus, SSH, um, remote access. But sometimes it's boring for us to go to the menu all the time. So you can just quickly here say service. And then in this case, uh, Apache. If you, by the way, if you click Apache and then you click the tab is gonna complete uh, the command which is pretty useful because it's gonna identify the service you are referring to if you don't remember the name that's pretty cool and then you say stop in this case and then if we run our lsoft command again trying to see which services are running in this specifically we can see that we don't have apache anymore okay the same we can do with mysql and we can also obviously start apache again so that's that way you can use service in the command prompt to start stop services and you don't need to do it through the uh, menu Uh, since we're talking about Apache, let's talk about the configuration quickly of this guy. Uh, again, we are not system administrators. We are not here to teach you how to configure Apache, MySQL. Those are out of the scope of our academy. But definitely, we just want you to know where you can find those configuration files within Kali. 
Apache is found here in Apache 2 and here is the whole configuration as usual apache.conf apache apache2.conf has all the configuration from Apache um, you know if you have multiple servers uh, the log file timeouts I mean all the configuration from Apache uh, HD access anything and also here inside enable is what you want to look at that's pretty useful because here is where you will have all the exercises uh, you can have here your own exercises loaded in your web server so if you open enable 000 default you can see that the document root is in bar ww but if this is changed you will always find here what is the root folder of your web server in this case is bar ww so let's go there here you can see that we have already our cstd folder so if we go there you can put here any directories and files and those are going to be reflected in, reflected in your web server so i just created here the the ola html which is just hey there so if we open our uh, browser uh, in kali they use this specific browser which is ice it's called ice whistle which is basically a Firefox version and here if we paste our uh, IP address oh, this is not our IP address let's grab it so we have here our IP address and slash hola.html oh, it's not this oh yeah hola does this HTML. oh sorry we missed our folder cstt so you can see that we have access of our uh, information that's pretty useful because you can see that we can always uh, load our exploits or anything that you are testing a web application that's the way to go okay so that's apache let's talk about uh, ssh well SSH everything is under SSH uh, here you have everything SSHD is to get access SSHD sorry SSHD is to get access to your own HTTP configuration and um, SSH uh, SSH without D has access to SSH client so here you can configure whatever you have in your SSHD server um that's pretty much it the way you test it is just obviously to do ssh localhost and it says refused because if you remember we we don't have ssh ssh running so we do again a service ssh start now we can do uh and stuff we can see it is running now ssd and finally we do uh, ssh to localhost and we might need sorry we should receive this kind of response like hey this is a new host do you want to add it you say yes and you get the prompt if you don't get this there is a problem and you might need to reconfigure the server but hopefully it's not Finally, MySQL. MySQL, the way you access it is with MySQL dash H localhost. By the way, let me tell you something quickly. In Kali, you already have MySQL. You can see here it's listening in localhost, which is totally recommended. 
uh, you don't want your database to be using the IP address in, and therefore can be reached outside Kali. We are just using it locally. So here is uh, listening locally, which is as expected. So you just need to do my SQL plus H localhost, and you should be fine. We get access. Uh, you can do something like use my SQL. This is out of scope, but just want to show you show tables. You will have the default default tables configured in my SQL. Uh, description of user, you know everything related to sysadmin so again if this is pretty useful because sometimes you need to access mysql because you want to add a new server or you need to add a new application that requires a specific database so that's the way to go uh, with mysql usually if the password is tor t-o-o-r and uh, uh, here you can do you can use dash p in case you have a another password and it's going to prompt you for the password in case you change the password for root or if it is store uh, so you can enter it or you can also if you added another user uh, like in my case and i added another user you can say dash u the user and dash p to prompt for the password and then you enter the password for that user and you get access with that user that's just another way to go so i think that's all um again if you want to change the password for root or any other user you use passwd you will need to enter a new password i am using root right now because all those options that i'm showing you all those options are um, are uh, only executed by root but it is highly recommended to use a, a user a default user for you so you just do add user uh, test you know and it will ask you for a password anything you want to write here you say yes and it is added so the way you know it is added uh, you can just cut etc passwd and grab this test you can see that it is already added there and so if you if you want to remove it you just do tell user test and it is removed so we do cut again we don't find it and when you remove a user you need to also remove manually the home folder and that's it finally in etc passwd you might want to go and do a search for bash bash means that those specific users have access you can see here we have defender and danux they have bash but sometimes and especially kali i saw that it has many other users with bash i don't recall but i i remember that probably let's say that my sql user right here if he has this bash that means my sql can get access to your box with a shell that's not recommended so make sure to have all of them false just root and your users with with a bin bash everyone else being false that's pretty much it in terms of quick configuration guys hope you enjoy it Vulnerability analysis is more scanning, like Cisco. If you have any Cisco routers, you can use these tools to scan those routers. Database-related scanners for SQL Server, for MySQL. We have the really cool tools like SQL Map, SQL Ninja. Those ones, once you get, you found a vulnerability in a web server that it is related related to SQL injection, uh, you can just automate the process to get access. To the server or to dump the database so those are pretty cool tools we're going to be using them uh, fuzzing tools you know fuzzers that you can use to find vulnerabilities it can be a spike it's pretty cool spike it is more related to uh, find vulnerabilities in applications it is support it supports 
plain text and binary protocols is pretty, is pretty uh, powerful. Uh, we have a MIS scanners. Uh, again, as you see here, is nmap again, it's repeated. Nikto is for web servers. I mean, this is kind of, you know, multiple sections and they repeat some of the of the um, tools. Open source assessments, Maltego. Maltego is pretty cool. This is an application, I'm just gonna click on it. Maltego is pretty cool for threat intelligence. So basically, uh, and actually it's a licensed, you need a license to, to use it, but they provide um, limited uh, uh, license for us that you just need to register and I think they give you 30 days and you can use it. But basically what it does is if you are trying to find, let's say in the IPT advanced persistent threat kind of research that we have a, a certification about that, by the way, uh, if you want to know who are the threat actors behind, probably you find a username or you find an email password. Maltego, if you provide that information, he's going to try to find all the IPs related to that username and all the hosts that were uh, uh, registered uh, by that name or related name. Uh, it's going to give you all the IPs uh, and then basically it's going to provide a map of all information related to that user. If you provide an IP, it's the same. It's gonna say, okay, this IP was open, but it's also related to these other IPs and eventually to this specific uh, host and to this specific user. So it's pretty cool to find the whole picture about uh, a specific person or a specific asset in the network. As I said, you need to register and and eventually you will get access to this tool, but I, I'm not gonna um, do anything here. Investigate, you know, when you start trying to add information. You can see here, you can add parents, you can add children, that's all related to the nodes where you are dealing with a, a, a research. When you're trying to find specific persons, IPs, host, servers. Um, and again, coming back to, to our set of tools. Okay guys, so we've quickly understood how Kali is installed, how it is configured, the services that are running, but basically uh, Kali uh, is powerful in terms of the applications running. As I mentioned, it is for penetration testers so that they can have a repository of multiple tools. And I'm gonna just quickly show you an overview of those tools. Uh, don't worry, most of the tools, I'm not going to say all of them, but many of the tools are going to be taught during all of our uh, cybersecurity uh, Think Tank Academy trainings. So, depends on the one that you are taking. If you go to applications and then to uh, Kali Linux, you can see here all the different uh, ap applications and tools that are available all are separated based on uh, penetration testing effort phase. That means that obviously the first step, for example, is information gathering. That's why you can see here uh, all the tools related to inform information gathering. That's all related to gather information about the host of the network available, uh, what kind of host they are, if there are routers, switches, uh, if there are Windows, Linux, uh, SNMP servers all related to, to the kind of assets to be tested 
is this specific section. So you can see multiple uh, tools around here. DNS analysis, as I said before, probably you just use DNS walk, uh, but probably when you come here, you realize that uh, there are many, many other tools that you can always use. Many of the tools are repeated in other sections. Like here you can see in map, as information gathering, but Nmap can also be used during uh, vulnerability analysis, you know, uh, it, it's very common. Maltego, Maltego is pretty cool. This is an application, I'm just gonna click on it. Maltego is pretty cool for threat intelligence. So basically, uh, and actually it's a license, you need a license to, to use it, but they provide um, limited uh, uh, license for us that you just need to register and I think they give you 30 days and you can use it. But basically what it does is if you're trying to find, let's say in the IPT, advanced persistent threat kind of research that we have a, a certification about that by the way uh, if you want to know who are the threat actors behind probably you find a username or you find an email password Maltego if you provide that information he's going to try to find all the IPs related to that username and all the hosts that were uh, uh, registered uh, by that name or related name uh, it's going to give you all the IPs uh, and then basically it's going to provide a map of all information related to that user. If you provide an IP, it's the same. It's going to say, okay, this IP was open, but it's also related to these other IPs and eventually to this specific uh, host and to this specific user. So it's pretty cool to find the whole picture about uh, a specific person or a specific asset in the network. As I said, you need to register and and eventually you will get access to this tool, but I, I'm not gonna um, do anything here. Investigate, you know, when you start trying to add information. You can see here, you can add parents, you can add children, that's all related to the nodes where you are dealing with a, a, a research. When you're trying to find specific persons, IPs, host servers I'm going to talk about the top 10, which is that, which are these ones, but just want to give you a quick overview. Web applications, again, all related to web applications, uh, fossers, crawlers, you have multiple there, vulnerability scanners, there are many as you can see here, and depending on the scan is, is the purpose. For example, Burp Suite is just a, is a framework which you can use to uh, intercept requests and response when you are trying to test an application and actually I have here open it burp suite burp suite is very powerful uh, it's gonna allow you to scan hosts uh, it's gonna allow you to uh, identify the structure of the specific web application it's gonna list all the directories and resources available uh, as I said it's gonna scan it uh, so that you can find multiple uh, vulnerabilities cross-site scripting is very common but many of them uh, intruder which is pretty cool because you can you can even say okay i just want to test this specific parameter in the post request or this other one so you can narrow narrow this down into a specific parameter that you just want to test and concentrate your efforts all of them trying to find vulnerabilities, repeater, 
which is just to resend a request i mean multiple options again these kind of tools we're going to be looking at when we are doing penetration testing on web applications um, we have the Cybersecurity web application defender we're going to be using these kind of tools there recommended to attend um, that's verb zip Open it, Burp Suite. Burp Suite is very powerful. Uh, it's gonna allow you to scan hosts. Uh, it's gonna allow you to uh, identify the structure of the specific web application. It's gonna list all the directories and resources available. Uh, as I said, it's gonna scan it uh, so that you can find multiple uh, vulnerabilities, cross-site scripting, it's very common but many of them uh, intruder which is pretty cool because you can you can even say okay I just want to test this specific parameter in the post request or this other one so you can narrow narrow this down into a specific parameter that you just want to test and concentrate your efforts all of them trying to find vulnerabilities repeater which is just to resend a request I mean multiple options again these kind of tools we're going to be looking at when we are doing penetration testing on web applications um, we have the Cybersecurity web application defender we're going to be using these kind of tools there recommended to attend um, that's verb zip Coming down to the other tools, we have password attacks, which is GPU. It's for GPU enable when you use your Craig, your um, and your video card to do cracking. You have offline attacks uh, where you can use specific tools, uh, which can help you to find to find vulnerabilities. You have off crack this pretty cool for rainbow tables basically it has all you need to provide the rainbow tables but there is an interface for you to use it and basically it will allow you to to, to crack based on the rainbow tables provided what is rainbow tables well it is out of scope but just so that you know it is a set of compiled tables gigabytes of hashes already compiled so basically what it does is it will try to find multiple passwords and what are the, their hashes related and when you use rainbow tables it will just look up for those specific hashes already cracked and it doesn't need to crack again so it, it will help you to find passwords already cracked in faster than just instead of trying to find combinations it will have always already pre-calculated hashes of the of those passwords i mean there are multiple multiple tools that are, we are never end but i just wanted to to give you a quick overview Armitage, that's pretty awesome. I, I, I just want to show you quickly Armitage. Armitage is is it leverage Metasploit. Basically, 
is for pen testers and you can imagine as you can see here all the hosts in that network that had been identified so Armitage is going to be uh, using finger fingerprinting or enumeration tools to list all those hosts it will use nmap for port, port scanning behind the scenes and then once it has all the hosts identified you can just right click on those hosts and say hey scan it or login in you know give me the services uh, operating system and eventually if it is vulnerable it is just a right click to get access into that specific host it will test all the different exploits against those machines based on the services identified that are running i mean i don't want guys to <laughs> confuse you but basically this this is one of the powerful tools that we are going to learn also in, in some of our certifications uh, here in the left side you can see all the exploits for depending on what you are testing it will it's going to give you all the information available for my sql for example if it is sql server uh, what they have available uh, if it is free sbd if it is solaris which is too old windows firewalls antiviruses everything that you need depending on the effort that you are doing so this is an amazing tool and uh, it's one of the tools that we're going to be learning in other certifications <music>
it's pretty cool tool when you have a vulnerability in a web application which is SQL injection related this tool is going to help you to get the remote shell or to dump the content of the database Wireshark is just a network sniffer for you to analyze packets going on through the network so these are just quick view of all the tools used uh, available in Kali many of them are going to be used through our cybersecurity think tank certifications so we are going to make sure to mention them so that you know which ones are related to related to which certifications and just be ready to play with them Hey everybody, welcome back. This is uh, Cyber Training 365. I'm joined with uh, Tim Burwolf. He's our uh, lead instructor in our Cyber, Cyber Training 365 Academy. Uh, today, actually, we're going to go over how to crack a WEP, a web password, uh, for, for your wireless device, basically. Uh, Tim is going to first explain you the setup, uh, what exactly is needed uh, to securely do it. You don't want to go and try it on your neighbors, just to let you know. You have to ethically do it and uh, there's a setup and if you have forgotten your web key, if you're using a uh, router which uses uh, web as, uh, as your uh, authentication, so you got to uh, basically use this setup. All right, Timber, all yours. Okay, hi everyone. So what we've got is we've got a laptop and we have the wireless router that's actually able to speak web. Most of them you buy today cannot speak web. Web is kind of an old technology and we're actually going to crack it. WPA and WPA2 you do not crack. You, you're going to have to use a rainbow table and guess the password. So you're basically going to do a lookup, a dictionary lookup. So the, uh, the way we're going to do the web though is we can crack the keys no matter how long they are. With WPA2 and WPA, the longer they are, the harder they are to guess, right? Mm -hmm. But this, it doesn't matter how long it is, we can crack it. So we're going to demonstrate that today, that this is why you don't want to use web. So you'll be hard pressed to find a router that supports web. Um, but you can find them. You can find them on the shelf at, um, at Best Buy, mm -hmm. and you can get them off of Amazon. And then we're also going to use this alpha card. So you can see the blue light on. We're running in Cali. Um, you can see my screen here in a second. We'll show you. I don't know if you can see the model number, but we'll publish it. I've uh, been assured that you'll be able to see the model number. This card is good because it'll speak 150 megabits per second, so you can use it for other stuff too. It's stronger, the antenna is stronger than your laptop is typically, so you might be able to use it for multiple things. Um, we're going to explain the difference between this and the WPA and WPA2. We may do a follow-on yep. for the WPA2 and WPA, and then uh, but we want to demonstrate the web first. So some of the classes you're going to take, you're going to be asked these kinds of questions, and you need to be able to demonstrate this. So. So uh, mainly there is a once you mentioned the classes there is mm -hmm. a class uh, which Timber is teaching in A plus where he goes around and talks about you know wireless access points and then uh, I have a class which uh, about uh, penetration testing and where there is a full uh, course on wireless penetration testing so this uh, this particular uh, blog uh, will be very useful for you uh, when when it comes down to even cracking your web and then uh, we'll do a follow up for uh, WPA uh, and WPA2 and if you're overseas, you're likely to have this gear because they don't recycle the gear as often as we do in America. So um, yeah. we don't, they don't update their technology as much, which means you don't need to buy a new gear. This router will last 100 years. If the technology doesn't change, you'll keep using the same router. If you had a web key 100 years ago, you may not change it. So this will also demonstrate that if you have it, if your grandma has it, you need to go and change it because you don't want to leave that. Okay, so um, we also have some uh, Thunderbolt connectors for the networking interfaces here, but all you really need is this alpha card and the belt and, and a router serving up web that you can reach. Okay, so you ready to dive in? Yep, let's okay. do it. Oh, we're also going to need a cell phone because we have to have a connection to the wireless router. Otherwise, we can't it. get it. So we're going to demonstrate that in a few minutes. So three things you need. You need a lap or four things. You need a laptop, router, alpha card to work with Cali, you need a specific version, so that's important. These are about $34, $35 on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I'll show you one with the model number. And then we're going to need anything that can connect to the, the wireless router using WEP. All right. So this is a modern cell phone. A modern cell phone will connect to WEP, 
but the new routers will not serve it. All right. Okay, let's dive in. All right, perfect. Let's go. Okay, so what we've got here on the screen is we've got uh, Kali Linux running here, and we have the alpha card here. This is the model number of the one we're using right now, and you can see that they're $34 on Amazon. They've been $34 for a long, long time. Now, let's take a look at the Belkin configuration. This is their configuration screen. And what I did was I just connected to it earlier over my wireless and it gave me this screen, right? So the information we want to know is I previously set as part of setting up this lab, I just set a 2.4 gigahertz key right here. So it's 42B8636F96, which you've already put in your phone. I right? already put that, yeah. So he's going to connect to it and we need those connections so that we can kick him off or just watch him reloading data natively. We'll, we'll discuss that in a minute. But he's going to have to connect, and then we'll see him connecting in a minute. So these are the actual instructions that you're going to do for this particular router. And here's the card number, Alpha AWUS036NHA. And this is the uh, key we're using on our router. This is the wireless key that we're going to try and crack and find. And these are the um, commands we're going to use. So we're going to use Airmon. And then we're going to use Aircrack, and all of this is part of a Kismet suite. So let's dive into Kali. So this is just basically Kali booted up. I've got it in a VM running on my OS X. It's running in Fusion 5. And so I'm just going to clear my screen. And we're just going to type in these commands down here. So the very first thing you want to do is you do Airmon ng. So that kind of sets up the cards, a little bit of overhead. And then we're going to type Airmon ng again, mon0, that's just the first monitoring interface. Um, and then we're going to do, so we need to do start. Start, the, start. start yeah, yeah airmon0 start. Oops, start, airmon, mon0. There we go, so it started. And then now we're going to do arrow dump. G, and then we're going to do mon0, our first interface, right? Because we can do more than one. Mm -hmm. Why is it, why did I miss that? Uh, I think so. Oh, 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 one oh, step oh, yep. for WLAN. Start WLAN0. Okay, now we have it. And then we're going to do arrow dump ng mon0. There it is. Okay, so... Now what we see is all of the access points that we can see in our range. And you can also see that it's WPA, CCMP. It tells you a lot of information, but the one we're looking for is WEP. If you can find a WEP one, you can crack it very quickly. But note that for the WPA2, the same steps will work. And then we have the ESSID, which is uh, abbreviated. And we have the BSSID, which is the MAC address. So they have the ESSID and the BSSID. So when you're walking through these steps, don't mix those up. We also want to pay attention to the channel. The one we're going to be using is on channel 4. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and, and we're going to go to the next tab. We're going to, I'm going to go ahead and stop this, but we're going to leave it open because we need to see this information. So I've already copied the key into memory, but what I'm going to do is edit copy here. And I note that we're on channel 4, and the web, and the ESSID, the ESSID is Belki, B-E-L-K-I. So now we're going to want to do... Um, so you're going to start arrow dump, right? Arrow dump. NG dash W, don't connect or, or anything yet. Okay. Um, w is for write. We're going to name the file Belki, and then we're going to specify channel 4. BSS ID. That's a dash dash, by the way. Don't miss that. Then we're going to do an edit paste for the MAC address. And then mon0. Okay, so now we're capturing frames. And you see Bali's talking to it because we're seeing frames go over. Mm -hmm. So you actually have two connections to it. Oh, no, no. Let's see. Stations. One, yeah. No, mine. Mine is also talking okay, to yeah. it. So, so I set up two my cell phone. phones, yeah. Yeah, I set up my phone earlier. So let's start hitting it, Bali. Just start right. reloading the page. All right. There is a command that you can specify that will send packets to it automatically if you want to speed it up, but we're only going to need 20,000. So when we get to 20,000 frames collectively, we're good. So no. just we're just reloading this main page. Yeah, I'm just, on, just hitting refresh. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, we're just hitting refresh. 
same for me. And we need to get to where we're at 20,000. Actually, let's run it up to 30 just in case. All right. Now, mine's really short, this password. If, if you had a really long one, you might have to go up to 100,000, but it's not likely. There, I've never had to go over 50, no matter how long they are. And I've tested some really long ones, really long keys, 128-bit keys. So basically, the, the goal here is, like, wherever you see your router which is using WIP, uh, you need to make sure, first of all, upgrade to WPA, right? As, I mean, this is upgrading your hardware, right? Right. For companies for whom it's important. And uh, otherwise, you know, the bad guys can definitely come in and crack your password if it is... Uh, well, they don't crack it, okay? Cracking is a specific thing. Mm -hmm. They're going to basically look, they're going to guess your password. For WIP? For WEP you crack. Yeah, for WEP. Yeah, yeah, for WEP you crack, but for WPA, I thought you were talking about WPA. Oh, no, I was saying that you look up. If, you have w, if you have WEP, then you need to upgrade to WPA. Yeah. yeah. All right, so look, we've reached 22,000 plus on one of them and 13,000 on the other. So we have about 30,000. Yeah. Close to it. All right. Cool. All you need is over 20. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and clear. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and wipe. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and stop this. So I'm going to hit Control C again, and I'm going to do an LS. And then you can see the Belky 01 caps and everything there. So that's all the this. file where all the data This is. is the stuff we've collected right here. There okay? you go. Mm -hmm. So let's clear that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and run air crack. Aircrack NG, and we're going to do XYZ on the capture capture file. So ours a Belky, because that's the name we gave it. 01 cap. That's the captured file, the captured data. There and then it's go. running it, it's running it, it's running it. Ooh, it's taking a little while. Failed, so it failed. So we need to try and capture more data. So maybe we didn't get enough off of one connection. So maybe, let's yeah, go, yeah. let's go try it again. Let's do like one connection with uh, 20,000. 20, yeah. yeah. Okay, let me do that. Just keep reloading. Yeah. Run it up to 30. We okay. were just shy of 30. Maybe we need 30 for this key. Yeah, it takes like a minute or so, but this kind of gives you a very good uh, And test. again, again, this simulates real interaction with the router, mm -hmm. our, a real user. We can keep kicking him off or sending packets to it to get those IVs or what are called initialization vectors. And then the air crack is going to take advantage of the weak uh, the, the flaw in the actual encryption, and we're going to crack it. So it doesn't matter what key, how long, that's irrelevant. What does matter is that we need, um, for, for WPA, is that we're going to do a, we're going to guess it, we're going to look it up. And that's why you want it long, because the longer it is, the higher the entropy, and the harder it is, the longer it takes for us to guess it. Not harder, it's just longer. Okay, you're at 20,000 frames now. Let me just draw a little thing. To illustrate what we're watching here, we're right. watching that number right there, that 22,000 number. So, guys, it takes like a couple of minutes if you're doing on a single test like this. So, yeah, it's okay. So, just it's be patient. Fast. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a lot faster than the WPA. The WPA will take you a day to do. But basically, you, you sit on their network for just a couple of That'll seconds. Good. Okay, so we've got 30. We're going to go ahead and stop it. Um, so you sit on their network for a couple of seconds, and then you go home and you work on the password. But with the web, you don't even need to do that. So let's go ahead, and we're probably going to be looking at um, Belky 2 here. So see, we have a second capture file now, so I'm so going to highlight one that one. one. Specifically, this one right here. That's the one we're after. So let me clear that, and we're going to say error crack. And then we're going to do... And air crack is part of the, the Kismet suite, right? Um, yeah, I forget which is exactly which, but it all comes in Kali, so all right, you don't need all to right. worry about that. It, it's all there. So we're going to do 02 cap. And there it is. It found the key. All right. So is that the one that we used? Yep. Uh, let's see if it matches. 42B8636F96. It is. So let so me just highlight it. That was super fast. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the key right here. And let me, uh, let me just circle it so you can make it very clear. So it says key found right here, decrypted correctly 100% right below that, right? So that's it. All right, cool. 
And yep. so this this key is is it like ASCII ASCII and, and or is it like just that's what the password was? That's not uh, well. It is ASCII because it's a hex number. Yeah. So it is a hexadecimal number that you're going to get mm -hmm. for the web key. It's a hex number. All right. So cool. your uh, WPA WPA two could be a hex number two or mm -hmm. a word or you know whatever. They're alphanumeric characters for WPA WPA two because it's a passphrase. All right. Perfect. Okay. Also, uh, one thing to know is uh, when you are when you're trying to do something like this, don't try it in your office or home network. Uh, try it in a contained environment because uh, this can uh, lead you in trouble. Also. Yeah, you right? don't. It, you need permission. Remember, for network security assessments and penetration testing, you need permission to touch that other person's network. Even if you're overseas these days, you need to have permission. Um, you know, most people want to help, so they. You get a lot of people pen testing your stuff, and you'll say, well, okay, I'll take the information you gave me, but you have to be careful. So um, they may, if, if something happened and you were pen testing at the same time, you may get blamed for it. So make sure you're taking screen captures and logging all of your data when you're doing real pen testing. Yeah. But when you're messing around like this and playing, this is why you don't want to do that, because there could be a real breach going on while you're doing that and then they discover it because you tripped the alarm and now all of a sudden they discover the breach. This is common and now you're in trouble for it. So don't mess around. All right, that's a key thing to remember. All right, Timber, thank you for uh, walking us through how to uh, crack sure. uh, your uh, web key. And I think so we will have another follow-up uh, blog post where we'll talk about WAP and WAP2 and how to uh, yeah. basically use... Uh, yeah. uh, Rainbow tables. Rainbow tables to, uh, to pre, get pre-computed hashes. Pre-computed um, hashes, and we'll guess them with the initialization vector. So we'll go over that, how it works. It's very similar to this, but it takes a lot longer to run. You may have to let it run overnight or for a couple of days. Okay. And you need to download a word list to go along with it, a dictionary. All right, cool. So, all right, thanks for joining us, guys. And uh, do uh, send, up, send us your feedback and any interesting mm -hmm. topics you want to uh, listen up uh, in the coming blog posts. All right, all right, see you.